In 57 BC, Julius Caesar besieged the stronghold of the Atawatuki, a tribe in northern Gaul. As the Romans raised a siege wall and began to build a rolling tower, the Gauls stood on their ramparts and taunted them. How, they called out, could such little men make such a high tower? Roman authors agreed that the Gauls were tall. The women, who were almost as tall as their husbands and much fiercer, were thought to be especially formidable. The Germans were also tall. When the Germanic chieftain Segestes took refuge in Rome, the people marveled at his great height. The Britons were reportedly taller still. Queen Boudicca was of a terrifying stature, amplified by a mass of blonde hair. It is usually assumed that ancient authors were correct and that the barbarians of northern Europe really were much taller than the average Roman. As we'll see, however, the difference was less dramatic than might be assumed. In view of the sheer size and ethnic diversity of the empire, the average Roman is an almost meaningless construct. But for the purposes of establishing some sort of baseline, we can use the skeletons found at Herculaneum, a short distance from modern Naples. Like the neighboring city of Pompeii, Herculaneum was destroyed by Vesuvius in 79 AD. Although most of the inhabitants seemed to have fled within the first few hours of the eruption, hundreds remained, sheltering in a row of stone boat sheds by the harbor. Death found them there when a wave of superheated gas roared over the city. Their bones, buried beneath 60 feet of volcanic debris, were only discovered a few decades ago. A few of the Herculaneans in the boat sheds were wealthy. One set of bones, belonging to a man in his mid-forties, had hands unmarked by the stresses of manual labor, but arms and shoulders sculpted by regular exercise at the baths. Other victims were obviously poor, like the so-called helmsmen, whose bones were stunted by childhood malnutrition and warped by a lifetime of hard work. There was a respectable Roman matron with perfect teeth, nicknamed the Ring Lady from the jewelry she wore. There was even a Roman soldier whose bones bore the traces of powerful muscles and combat scars. The soldier, at nearly five feet nine inches, was among the tallest men in the sheds. The helmsman, at five four, was one of the shortest. The ring lady was not quite five two. The average height of the men in the sheds was five feet six and a half inches. The female mean was five feet one inch. These figures correlate well with those from neighboring Pompeii, where the recovered bones suggest male and female averages of 5 feet 5.5 five inches and 5 feet 1 inch. The male average across all of Roman central Italy has been estimated at 5 feet 4.5 inches. The residents of Pompeii and Herculaneum likely owed their relatively imposing stature to the fact that both towns were located on the sea and so had access to ample protein in the form of fresh fish. How much taller were the northern barbarians? The Britons, as mentioned earlier, were reputed to be among the tallest northerners. Surveys of skeletons from pre-Roman Britain, however, tend to give an average male height of only about 170 centimeters, that is, around 5 feet 7 inches, less than an inch taller than the average at Herculaneum. Surveys of skeletons in other parts of Iron Age northern Europe have produced broadly similar results with averages in the 170 to 175 centimeter, that is, the 5.7 to 5.9 range. Elite northern men, however, seem to have been taller. The Iron Age chieftain buried at Hochdorf in what is now southern Germany, found with the remains of gold-plated shoes, a huge cauldron of mead, and many other treasures, was over six feet tall. The Marlow warlord, an Anglo-Saxon who lived shortly after the collapse of the Western Roman Empire, was about six feet tall and powerfully muscled. The old Krogan man, an Iron Age notable found in and preserved by an Irish bog, was about two meters, six feet, six inches, tall. Among the signs of his elite status were the contents of his stomach, which indicated a diet rich in meat. Height is a function of both heredity and health. Every person has a potential stature encoded in their genes, but if they receive inadequate nutrition in childhood or suffer repeatedly from serious illnesses, 
they fall short of this potential. Many Northern Europeans were, and are, naturally tall, and in the ancient world, Northerners had the additional advantage of a diet that featured substantial amounts of dairy and red meat, which provided more protein than the cereal-centric cuisine of non-elite Romans. Northern elites, who had the most access to meat, were especially well-nourished. This would have been apparent on the battlefield. Although Romans serving in the prestigious first cohorts of the legions were supposed to be at least 5'8", a strong physique was always more important than height. The average Roman soldier was probably only slightly taller than the average civilian, perhaps 170 centimeters, or 5'7". The average barbarian warrior was likely to be only an inch or two taller. But since barbarian chieftains and their elite war bands tended to fight in the front lines, Roman soldiers often found themselves facing men a head or more taller than themselves. I have a new book, Insane Emperors, Sunken Cities, and Earthquake Machines, More Frequently Asked Questions About the Ancient Greeks and Romans. It's a sequel to Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants, and it's available for pre-order now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and through your local bookstore. If you're interested in more Toldenstone content, including my podcast, check out my channel, Toldenstone Footnotes. I also have a channel called Scenic Routes to the Past, which is dedicated to historically themed travel. You'll find both channels linked in the description. Last but not least, please consider joining other viewers in supporting Tolden Stone on Patreon. Thanks for watching.